Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and another episode of the Battle for Astrakhazi. So in the last episode, our Irbys managed to hold this northern base against an assaulting force, which was rather significant. I'm actually shocked at how well they did. So down in the south, we're going to push forward along the coast here and we're going to take over a base along the, along the southern lake and hopefully push back the entire front line. All right, so we're approaching the base here. We just came up over one of the bigger hills here. I can call it a mountain, but it's really a hill. And the base is down here, and these rivers kind of just fork and flow down to the coast. So we're going to go down here and um, see what's here. Now, I don't know. Like, we're not, we don't, we're not sure if there's any units here or not, but we'll find out. So before, as we're actually moving out, but before we start in combat, I want to tell you a little bit about what we changed here. You notice the Griffin slowdown's a little different. Um, that's because we got the Mongoose into battle. And I had to pull off of the Griffin. I had I to pull you. off a, um, a double heat sink, Klein double heat sink, in order to be able to get um, our Kit Fox up and running because it was missing one and we had no choice but to add one if we wanted to get into combat. So we went ahead and did that. And I went with an Ultra 20 loadout for the uh, Cougar with an ER medium, ER small, and a Rocket 10 pack just for an extra little bit of punch if we need it. Right, for the Griffin, I pulled off the ER large and um, Copy that, replaced it with a pair of ER mediums and a heavy rocket launcher 20. So, I mean, if, if we're not firing the rocket launcher 20, then we're okay. Uh, the, rocket launch, the heavy rocket launcher 20 is actually 27 heat to fire, which puts us significantly over. So you can see it here. I added a tagger. I pulled off the ER small. Um, but the heavy rocket launcher 20 will give us a nice big punch. If we're facing a really tough enemy, we can get close with this thing. It'll give us a, a, a really good punchy weapon. It's 12 damage times 20. So if we can get in close, we can shred somebody really fast. All right, we're going to move up, but we're going to stay in the trees here. Because once again, I have no idea what to expect here. Um, I also found a, uh, a set of uh, bolt-on incendiary 15 rockets which I've um, added to the Kit Fox as well to give it a little bit of extra punch. The Kit Fox is doing really well on its own, but Rolling. having those extra little bit of rockets could mean the difference between taking out a turret and not taking out a turret. Location confirmed. All right, we're moving up over there. Um, operational military base. All right, it's got a drop pad too, which is great, which means we can move our drop ships in or a drop ship in once we're done here. Coordinates received. So you'll notice we're fielding, fielding seven units. I tried to get all of my, um, all of my uh, individual playthroughs up to seven units uh, because I want to make sure that um, when we're fighting the, the uh, tougher content that we're able to do it without too much of a problem. All right, let's keep you, let's keep you here. So the, the guy that's piloting the Cougar right now, I want to keep you up high if I can. Aye, aye. We'll move the mislinks and the mongoose down. Moving to position. The guy who's piloting the, um, the Cougar, I'm saying, is a guy that was the Locust pilot that ejected in episode 17, the clan Locust pilot. Coordinates received. So we've taken him as a bondsman. We're going to see how he does. Moving out. And the only mech pilot that I could actually get had really crappy gunnery and piloting. Uh, he's got good guts, um, but that's about it. I'm really hoping nothing else pops up behind me up go. here. I have no idea where the enemies are going to come from, so i got to be really careful here. Uh, let's just brace here. Brace here. We're going to move you in. I'm going. Put you down here. Move you up a little bit for some fire support up no here if we sweat. need it. Vehicle in to a strike distance. And you can just brace there for now. I hate this this weight. I have no idea where the enemy is going to come from. They're heading your way. So it looks like they are going to respond to us taking this base. They're not going to let us go untested. Oh, they're right behind me. They must have been following me. Okay, what do we got here? A hammer, a scout, a weapons carrier LRM, a wasp, 
Anubis. Oh, so it's nothing really... All right, well... Sure. So this is supposed to be a one and a half, but apparently it's not. Actually, uh, we want to... Uh, no, we better move. We don't have any uh, evasion, so we better get moving here. We can apply some damage early on. Great. If we can't, we can't. All right, let's just go with... I want to add a bit of heat to this guy. Yeah, because he'll be standing in fire even if I miss. Or maybe he won't. Oh, no, he will be. Okay, add a little heat to him. Good to go. You need to get up there and help out the... Uh... It's all long range. Okay. On the move. Full speed. Got to help out that hunter. We got to get back up this mountain because I got the height advantage on us now. So our scout doesn't run very hot. LRM weapons carrier. Let's drop some lerms on this guy. I was thinking about switching one of these tons to Hydra ammo, but I'm not 100% sure yet. There's been a few times when I wish I've had Hydra ammo on this thing, but not always. So Standing by. I think I probably will go ahead and do that. Also, just as an aside, um, that fast game ammo that we picked up in the Irby um, fight, I haven't run the Irby Lance in a... Well, I, I, sorry, I ran it once Waiting for orders. after that last mission. Um, just because I wanted to see what the fast game was going to be that. like. Oh my god. All I have to say is, fast game? <laughs> it's... It's... the Okay. It's broken. It... Minefields are broken. They they really need to do something. It's funny because, you know, you complain about, oh, there's no damage. Then you complain, oh, well, there's too much damage. Then you complain, oh, it's scattering too much. Like, you can complain about fast cam all you want. But what I think should happen with fast cam is that they should have it as... Uh, it should be a thick minefield. I'm here. Which means the minefield should do a half-decent amount of damage. Roger, Skipper. Take it right? You should limit it to where it scatters. So when it lands, it doesn't spread across a tremendous amount of hexes. So it lands in like, you know, maybe it's the one hex plus the ones around it. And that's it. But make it one ton per shot. So if you land the fast cam directly on somebody and they have to move out, they're gonna take a chunk of damage on their legs. The minefield will stay, but it's not going to be broken whereas you got like you can like you can just lay a whole field with those mortars you can't shoot down the fast cam with mortars like being fired by mortars that is so it's just broken it you can just fill a field with mines and just sit back behind a hill and watch them rip their legs off now obviously ooh, that's not good obviously it's not going to work with heavy mechs but lights and mediums, it's brutal. Like it really is brutal. I hear ya. All right, let's get into the fight, buddy. Go See what you can about. do. I'm expecting this ultra to jam a fair bit, so we're only going to go single shot until we get close enough to warrant going double. Uh huh. All right. Well. Reporting heavy damage. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, maybe this guy's not going to work out. <laughs> maybe we need to kill him. I think he's mad for me for for uh, me calling him a coward in that episode that he bailed out in. You know, honestly, I wouldn't blame him. All right, where are you going, buddy? Try to take advantage of that, are you? Took a hard hit there. Yeah, it's not your fault. We know whose fault it is. All right, we want to take the back shot on this guy. Twenty percent. Twenty-two on the Oz Scout. Thirty-seven on the Wasp. Okay. No idea. Let's go on the Wasp. We can do probably do the most damage on this guy. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Stop. Getting some good clustering shots. But yeah, that that's just it's just broken. The the fast cam. They gotta do something about it. Cause low levels, you could just 
Like the Irby squad with fast cam is like fast cam and mortar eights is brutal. It's just brutal. You'll get to see in the next fight. It'll be next week, but you'll get to see in the next fight. Waiting for orders. All right. Um, let's get you away from the, the uh, cougar. Location let's confirmed. push these guys' faces. That's not too bad. Could we get a kill off this? I don't know if we could. His back armor like. Well, I don't know. If we pan it. Let's go with everything. Okay, the laser hit. Well, there you go. Answers that question. I'm out of short range missiles. That answers that question. Let's negate as much height as as much height advantage as we can here. Oscar, meh. That would be prime <laughs> prime use of the heavy rocket launcher on that guy. Weapons carrier LRM, huh? Oh, it's only got one LRM though. And no armor. Let's uh, take a shot in this guy. All right. It's panicking. Waiting for orders. One thing I will say is I do love the speed on the clan mechs. All right. Uh, let's just fire on this guy. Engaging target. Okay, where did the barrage go? They get far. Oh, well, it's way off. Never mind. Okay, do we take out? No, we're gonna go. I was gonna think. Of, think we might take out the wasp. Oh, we can't hit the uh, LRM vehicle. All right, let's remove the wasp from service then. Firing on target. If we can. There we go. Hostile removed. Engine destroyed. So we're not gonna get much salvage out of this, but. That's fine. We're going to keep pushing forward up the coast then. If we can if we can do it, we're going to do it. We haven't got much resistance here, so we'll just keep pushing. Ooh. That shot went internal. Yeah. Waiting on you, Commander. Okay, I want you shooting away from my guys. Got it. Max speed, no shooting. Now hopefully he's not actually going to hit anybody. Besides this guy. We're going to double this up, put the rocket pack on, and just hammer this guy. Commencing alpha strike. There's more where that came from. I hope so. This guy sounds so novice too. There's more where that came from. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. He's probably just intimidating fighting with us. Since we got like a 20 to 0 win versus loss record. Yes, Commander. Oh, I also got something else to show you too. Um, and this is brilliant. Uh, I will say the Rogue Tech guys, okay. once again, brilliance. Brilliance. And I'll show you in a minute here. Not this turn, but next turn. I'm going to go into LRM mode. I don't want this guy to bail out. So we're going to go into this guy here. Shoot them. If we can. We get lucky. There you go. Ah, not lucky. I mean, it's all skill. You know. I'm so glad this guy moved back into the barrage. I'm ready. All right. Giant. Um, not the guy I'm thinking of, but we'll just move forward. We have a solid blue line there. I thought there was a solid blue line there for a second. No, I guess not. Got it, Commander. Chase this frigger down. 
Looks like he's got a very energy hot load. I'm gonna throw the rockets on. Hopefully we can burn up, burn up some of that ground under him. Warm him up a bit. I'm out of short range missiles. Ah, nine isn't very many hits, but we'll take it. Am I gonna get a chance to use this rocket launcher? I guess I am if I go here. I gotta use the heavy rockets. We can't not use them. We have them. There you go. 30% chance to hit. We're gonna burn ourselves up firing them, but we're gonna do it. Uh, let's, yeah, let's keep it on Inferno. Alright, a few of them hit. Ooh, another head hit. Nice. The one thing I am noticing is a lot more head hits. Like, a lot more head hits. Copy that. So, I don't know if they adjusted the head hit. Uh, chance or not, but head hits are like back in play again. Ooh. And I forgot to show you. Solid connection on that one. So, uh, Blade now has, when he's piloting the Kit Fox, now has the ability to fire and maneuver, and he's also got multi target capability. So, just thought I'd let you know that. Let's go right here. No shooting, just running. Yeah, it's because of his uh, ability with the mech. I'll show you after the combat. Got the drop on the Not sorry. Target Ooh, alert. see ya. What can I do for you? You can run up here, but don't fire. Pedal to the metal. Once your gunnery is a little higher, I'll feel more confident of you shooting past shooting past us. But after that last. That last shot. Uh, we'll, we'll wait till your gunner is up around six before we let you do that again. I mean, I know it's only like another, what, six percent, but still, I just feel more confident if he knew what he was All right. doing. Alright, Marlon, they attack you from behind. Let's give this guy some punishment. You should be in optimal range right here. It's all yours. Oh, he's still going. He'll move, take the barrage, and hopefully that'll be it. Unless he moves out of the barrage, which he's gonna do. Oh well. I should just reserve and let Marlin take care of it, but... We'll kill the guy. So does it show us down? It doesn't show us down I'm here. Receiving you. No, it doesn't. I was hoping it would, but it won't. It won't. On my way. I think the mist link is mist links is the next um, mech that we're going to look at for upgrading because uh, you know this this is not a bad loadout for a, for a fast mech, but on we might switch it up a little bit. I know we're we're in standard heat sinks with this that mech too, so good. we need to get some clan double heat sinks. Once that happens, yeah, see, I'll be able to show you here. Roger that. No, I won't. But he's got fire maneuver now, so. Just with the Kit Fox. That's it. Mission successful. So with all of my playthroughs, I've been... Uh, running some offline matches, like just like one skull matches, just so, or not one skull, sorry, half skull matches, just so I can uh, generate some C bills to make our financial report. Plus, I had to do that a little bit to be able to make um, to get the extended dropship or the the extra dropship on the playthroughs. We're gonna leave those out for now. MML five, that's a possibility. We might be able to drop that into the mist links. I'm gonna put that in there for now. Regular endo. We're gonna look for C bills here. Um, Guardian ECM. Regular double heat sinks. I'm gonna take those two. Protective padding, eh? Does that just go in one slot? Where does that go? Oh, that's interesting. I think I'm going to take that just because I'm interested to see what it what it does. Sam ammo. Thunder augmented. Do I, I'm not going to go with Thunder with this playthrough. 
We've got it going on. We're going to have it going on with the with the Irbies, so there's no point in doing it here. How much is the Beagle Probe worth? Three, uh, three point seven cores. We only got the eighty. It's only one core. I guess I cored them all. That's two hundred and fifty thousand. End of steel is how much? Five hundred. We'll probably end up selling it. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. We'll go this route. But yeah, I've been running like uh, like offline missions for all, like my other guys, so that um, we have the sea bills. Now, regular Beagle probe, we can just go ahead and sell that. Sell the endo. Sell the regular heat sink. Jump jets can go. We'll hang on to the padding. Lose you. Like if I don't need to do it, I'm not going to. But like in the past little bit, I I had to because I had to be able to get enough for increased drop and all that. So okay, so after a quick repair and refit. We've uh, continued to push along, and it uh, looks like we've run into some units here that are attempting, that were attempting to, to reinforce that base, but uh, that too late. Be done. We got there first. All right, so um, the one thing I did do uh, before we got continued on was, if we go to Hotwire here, so we were 0.1 ton underweight with the Cougar, so I went ahead and I dropped in that... Um, that uh, padding that we picked up with the last uh, mission, I dropped it into the torso with the ammo. Uh, apparently, it's like it's like two slots, half ton or something like that, um, or quarter ton, whatever it was. So I pulled off a little bit of armor off of the back and, and the CT, just a tiny bit, just to get the, to fit in there. So we got 15% crit resistance for our ammo for that guy, which is good. Uh, that Three AC quarters. that AC10 ammo will rip that mech apart if uh, if it gets hit. All right, so let's get up here. Double time. Let's go. Set up an ambush position, if we can. I think they've already de detected us here, though. I mean, they 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 must they must know something's wrong after the that base went quiet and the uh, reinforcements that they sent went quiet. So they know we're here somewhere. Ready to get it on. All right, Blade. What do you think? You know what? While that looks like a good idea, we're gonna do this. Roger. We're not gonna shoot. That doesn't actually look like a good idea. You think you'd be able to shoot that guy, but then you gotta remember there's him and some other guys behind him that are gonna Order. be moving after us. So they're all gonna be targeting that mech. Because it's really the only guy gonna be out in the open, right? Let's hope they don't have uh, artillery here. Because that could be bad. So once this mission's over, I'm going to show you the uh, how what what skills our pilots have gained based on the mechs that they're piloting. So each mech has got its own quirks. Um, damage, holding firm. And the longer you pilot it, like each time you the pilot the mech, you get one point towards piloting the mech. That makes sense. Stand in by. And um, you Stand gain out. different statuses. Like so, five missions gets you. I think it's like veteran and. 10 is like elite and then it goes on it goes up to 100 I think I think it's like 5, 10, 20 40 100 I think or 60 or maybe it's 100 something like that and depending on the mech each one of those levels gives you a little bit of bonus not a lot but a little bit so for instance like level 2 which we have for, for our Kit Fox pilot um Sorry, I take it back. It's not... It's based on the mech's quirkiness, I guess. So sometimes it, you, you have to have 20, 20 um, missions what in a mech to be able to use some of the abilities. Let's just get into here. Go in turbo. But I'll show you that afterwards and you'll, and you'll, and you'll see what I mean. It's uh, If you haven't played Rotec or you're not 100% sure on it, um, I can show you what I mean. It's really cool the way they did it. The way they laid it out, fantastic. Once again, another thumbs up for the Rogue Tech team. You know, it's funny too because now that I've gotten back into playing Rogue Tech a fair bit, um, I play a lot of offline stuff too, just because I want to get like re -famili like familiarized with all of the um, standing by the mechs and stuff uh, and what they can do. Let's stay in the trees. It's going to make it harder for us to hit them, but it'll way. be. 
extra defense for us. So now we've got some sensors on these guys. What are we dealing with here? Commando 1A, Cobra, Defender light tank, I have no idea what that is. Another fire starter, Tiger, Toro, Toro, Toro. All right, um, not the best chance to hit. Do I want to lay a barrage here? No, we'll hold off. And let's go, yeah, let's go Inferno because this guy's hot. We'll hold off on our other Inferno rounds for the vehicles. Hopefully we can take them down quickly. We could fire a maneuver here, but we're not going to. Like if we go to a, oops, uh, activate abilities. Yeah, see, we can multi-target now with this mech. It's no longer a skill, which I think is fantastic. It's just a quirk for, you know, how good you are with the mech. Let's get in here. We are going to throw the rocket pack on for this one, though. And... Yes. We can pull their eyes down. I'm already there. Before the rest of these guys move forward, it'll, if they got indirect, it'll make it super hard for them to hit. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Firing. Taking the shot. All right, this guy's just about done. Have a seat, buddy. Take a load off. See, I trust this guy to shoot past, not with the heavy rockets, of course, but I trust him to shoot past my guys. Just not the other guy. Let's see if we can leg him. Uh, SRM-6, let's switch this over to standard. Tag her on, yes. Rocket launcher can stay off and firing. You're damn right, he's stressed. Now we didn't take any damage, did we? No, I didn't hit his back. Looks like he's been hit though, so maybe. At least it's not an AC-10 hit. Yes, Commander. Stay in the trees. Once again, trees makes it harder for you to hit the enemy, but it also makes it harder for them to kill you with a shot. Uh, let's just go for a kill shot. Okay. I think we're going to reserve with our other two units just to see where these guys end up going. Where are they going? They're trying to run away. We can't get off the cliff. We were just supposed to be reinforcements. Commander? This isn't in my... This isn't in my contract. I'm not supposed to be fighting these guys. Aye. Uh, yep. Keep, it up. Keep the pressure on, everybody. Keep the pressure on. Oh, well, somebody's going to be facing a double shot AC-10. Ooh. Nice shot. I hear you. That must have been a rifle. Got it. Max speed, no shooting. All right, we're gonna leave it in double mode, and let's throw the rocket pack, pack ten on because if we can kill this guy, uh, it's gonna make things a lot easier. Ooh, two hits. You're making up for the mistake in the last episode, or the last mission, that is. What the hell is that? Looks like a friggin' trike or something. Rotary? What the hell? Rotary Rifle Wrecker? <laughs> Ralph 3R. Well, it's got a rotary rifle. Interesting. I'm here. Not really, but um, how do we want to engage this? We want to start putting pressure on these guys. I think we do. I want to. I want to try and kill that rotary yep. rifle wrecker before it gets a chance to shoot at anybody. 
Guy's got to be a crazy pilot, so... Not the best chance to hit, but it's a good place to put the barrage down, so we'll put this in here. Going with all the rockets on this guy, because if we can get a kill- oh shit. Put it right at my feet. I'm out of short range missiles. Dude, what's up with the barrage? Good to go. Like, honestly, what the hell did you do with the barrage? On the move. Fire. Primary target is damaged, Commander. Keep it up. They're not that fast, guy. I think we can hit the RRR. RRR, ro Rotary Rifle Wrecker, from here. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good chance to hit. What about the Tiger, though? Better chance on the Tiger, and I'm going to throw up the rocket launcher. Ooh, we're going to go right into heat problems, eh? Leave the tag, well... Leave the Tiger on, because if we don't kill it... Then that's good for a follow-up for everybody else. He's got an AC-10 on him. Alright, not bad. I could have waited till I got a little closer, but... Commander. We can get kills earlier rather than later, I'd like to do that. Full speed, no target. Don't worry, we'll be out of the barrage next turn, so I'm not worried about that. We might get the kill on this guy. How much armor does he have? That's a fair chunk of armor. How do we do in the Tiger? We did pretty good. I think we go after the Tiger again, though. Giving them everything I've got. There we go. One more for the trash I'm just worried about that AC-10 connecting. That's almost as, that's almost like a head that's like a headshotter. 60 damage in the head is almost a complete kill. Almost. Not quite, but almost. Alright. The, the triple R is yours, buddy. Let's get a kill on him if you can. AC-10, not a bad chance to hit. Leave the rocket pack on. Oh, he hit with both again. He's redeeming himself. Maybe he's just more confident this, 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 this uh, mission. The last one was his first mission with us, so... These guys are trying, the mechs are trying to hide and pretend like they're not there. Waiting for orders. There's nobody here. Psst, go away. Where does this guy hit? What's the defender? So left. Can we get a left side shot on him? No. But I am going to move a little closer, just so the SRMs have a better chance to hit. And yeah, we'll dump everything into this guy. All right, getting there. Reporting critical hit. That guy put himself in a bad position. Commander. All right, Marlon, just get up here a little bit. Learn this guy. Learn him a lesson. Nope, didn't get him. Damn. Oh well. Well, we didn't do too bad. Okay, so Toro's got a large laser. Um, this guy got destroyed? Oh, he must have hit him and killed him. <laughs> I completely missed that. What's up, boss? Maybe he wants to join us, too. Okay, let's get out of the barrage. On the move. Full speed. We'll take the flames, it's fine. That's fine, as long as we're out of the barrage. That's a lot of heat. Um... Just drop the rocket pack for now. Locked up. I'm receiving you. 
No shooting. Just running. I know there's still a vehicle there. I'm not worried about it. Let's keep applying the damage to this guy. Uh, let's go tandem though. Got a feeling he's got missiles in there. Firing. Oh well. Waiting for orders. Uh. Yeah, we're not gonna get. Let's go front shots on this guy. Just gotta decide which which way we're gonna attack him from because a lot of people are gonna be shooting at him, so just need to figure out which way we're going here. Alright. And we're good this way. And he's not so good. All right, buddy. What can I do for you? Can you get? You certainly can. You can get out of the uh, barrage on this side. Supply. Keep applying pressure to these guys. Good chances with the ultra. We're gonna fire twice. Nice. So, I don't really have a lot of um, head components for our mechs currently so uh, one thing i did have is a couple of fire control system flax i had one left over so i put it on the um, the cougar it's actually not a bad fire control system it it will ignore two chevrons of evasion and also is minus one recoil so it works out well with the uh with the ultra 10. i mean it's not a perfect fire control system by any means but i think i would take that over the one gunnery anytime <laughs> i laugh at your puny attack because the standard clan cockpit is one plus one gunnery. But in a situation like this, I think I would rather go with the uh, evasion ignore. Because a lot of these lighter mechs are going to have like two evasion at least. So we can ignore both of those. I'm and then reduce our ballistic uh, inaccuracies with the recoil reduction. Well, chance to jam that is. Let's hammer this guy. Want to hot load it? Let's hot load it, because fuck it. Jammed. That is the thing about vehicles, though. That um, even if you lose the weapon system at the end of the battle, you get it back anyway. It gets repaired 100% at the end of battle. No matter what settings you have it, have your game set to, you always get everything back on a vehicle. It's a little bit, um, I don't want to say frustrating, um, because once again, we're using vehicles, which we've never been able to do before, right? So I can't complain. Uh, but it would be nice that if we could like, at least have to replace the components. Like I know we, we may never get, we may never get the ability to uh, load out a vehicle, like which I don't mind. Like, I, Ready for you know, like I said, once again, we're getting a chance to use the vehicles, so can't really complain. But if we can get a chance to, uh, like, if we have to, like, back. if a system got destroyed, just the ability to, to replace it with one that you have in storage, I think would be nice. How much is this going to add? Just a tad bit. But we got a good chance to inflict a lot of damage, so we're going to take Target it. Lost. Heavy damage. Got something you want done? Yep. I do. On my way. Double time. I know you're a little hot, but we gotta shoot this guy. Let's just leave the regular medium laser off. Acknowledge. We're at the end stages of this fight, so I don't mind running Critical a little hotter. Commander. I apologize, somebody mentioned in the comments too about heat and not really having to worry too much about overheating. But you do have to worry about your ammunition cooking off. That's one thing you do have to worry about. Um, what else? I've seen so many other mechs, like the battles that I fought, when you shut an enemy down, it's over for them. Like, it, it like, literally is over. Um, so getting shut down, like if my mech shuts down, 
because of like me um, it just it puts us in a really bad situation because they could kill us right Affirmative. and they most likely will try to do it so trying to stay away from the red line as much as possible um, is for me is your best bet right like right now we're running the red line and if that if that um, fire started to decide to hit us with a few flamers it would put us over but we're in a position right now where it, the game is basically a win it's just how fast we want to take them out I'm yes, opting commander. for faster rather than slower because we can end up doing more damage to them Confirmed. or it'll end up restricting the amount of damage they do to us let's, let's just put it that way you go to standard shot I don't want to destroy it but Come on, bail out. There you go. Yes, Commander. On this guy, please. Engaging. That Toro still gotta go. He should be. Yeah, he should be reconsidering his life choices at this point. Screw you! May overheat, but I'm not going to because I'm not moving, so. Ooh, head hit. Yeah, see what I mean? Waiting for orders. We're getting far more head hits than we did in the past. Uh, we're gonna go tandem. Ooh, primitive engine. That hit something good. It did. Yes, Commander. Hmm. Still here. Copy that. It's the same either way. This guy's still got a lot of armor on his side. We might make him bail though. All right, we'll just switch these two around. Firing on target. All right, two hits. Two hits. We'll take it. Receiving you. Uh, we're not moving. Let's just go ahead and fire. Engaging target. Another, see another head hit. Scored a critical hit. Yeah, we got fire maneuver now, so we can we can walk. We're gonna overheat, but so we're just gonna stay here. I hear you. Don't miss. It will be very disappointing to me if you miss. Firing everything I've got. Okay. Run when you had the chance. You should have. You're doing pretty good, man. SRMs, Commander. You are doing pretty good. Oop, too far. Right there. Moving out. See if we can get this guy to get the hell out of here. I'm gonna leave this one off so we don't shoot our own guys, but Commander. I guess this guy's not gonna go anywhere. Firing on target. He's just running. Oh, he's got a large laser though. It's probably a Toronto, but still. Took a hard hit there. You did, man. Oh, you just stripped the armor off. What are you worried about? Yes, Commander. You think you can finish this guy up? Rolling. Gonna give him to you. He's all yours. All you gotta do is kill him. Let's switch from that to Inferno. There you go. One less target. All right. Mission successful. All right, so two relatively easy missions back to back. Awesome. Uh, let's get out of here. I don't want any vehicles or mech parts. I mean, I guess I could take the fire starter S, but we'll just end up trashing it anyway. Tiger, let's just see what else is down here. Heavy rotary rifle. 
Yeah, see, if that guy had gotten shots off on us, that could have been really bad. Minus 25% armor damage modifier. So it would still be doing 45 per shot. That could, I mean... Recoil of 4 per shot above 2. Ooh, can you imagine that? 6% jam chance per shot. So, you know, you dial it up to 6, you got a recoil of... <laughs> you got a recoil of 16, and your jam chance is like 36%. I mean, I guess it's... Okay. Yeah, that guy did have a Tron laser. How much is it worth? 300,000? Eh. Eh. Anything down here? I don't think there's anything down here I want. The 220 cores, maybe? How much are they worth? 733. Energy fuel cell is 550. They reduced it. Fire control system jam. Minus 25% jam chance. That's... That's an answer to some of the problems we've been having in the past, but it's the wrong... That's the wrong, uh... Playthrough to be getting that on, though. Okay, standard fusion core. I know I'll get 100,000 for that when I sell it. I wish we got the heavy rotary on a different playthrough. How much is this worth? Nothing. But I wonder if I should take it just in case. Because we, we're lacking fire control systems. And then maybe we just take the three. No, forget it. I'm not taking the fire starter parts. Take those two, and then the fuel cell is what, 500 and 50? We'll take those three. Wait, how much is this worth? 700. It's worth more. Uh, take the 210 core. Where is it? There you are. All right, we got, the, well, we got the fire starter anyway. I'll probably assemble it, but then just sell it. That can go, that can go. Sell, 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 sell. Get this stuff out of here. Uh, AC2 ammo, we'll hold on to it. I don't know, if, well, we're never going to use it. I don't know why I bother holding on to stuff like that. All right, we made some good coin off that. All right, first thing first, let's go into the mech bay. We're going to assemble the fire starter. Out of storage. Now we do have enough for a hunchback too. I picked up a couple parts, but I'm gonna just trash those in front of you guys because what I'm what I'm doing is I'm I, we might be end, end up putting together another unit for another part of this uh, campaign. So I'm gonna trash this out of here because the, um, the leader will most likely have a hunchback to start. So I'm gonna trash all of the hunchback parts just to say that uh, if we do do that playthrough, then then that uh, will be the um, will be the hunchback that start the, those off. Now we do have enough to put the fire starter S together. So the S one is what? Uh, and 3049. What's the difference between the two? Guarding ECM suite. Beagle active probe. I think the probe is worth more, so let's go this route. I'm going to go ahead and ready this. It's cheaper to do it this way, too. So it's going to cost us 11, 12,000 to put it together. Come on. All right. And then we go in here. We might have kept some stuff off it. Ah, a few things. Flamers. Jump jet. AMS. That's not bad. Just for the sake of argument. So this thing had a 210 core. The Beagle probe. Mediums and flamers. Okay. It does have two flamers. Three flamers. We'll end up selling them all anyway. It doesn't really matter. But alright. Let's just get out of here. Like I said, we're just going to try and keep with clan stuff on this particular playthrough. It's not going to give us... We're not going to be fighting the clans all the time, so we're not going to have an opportunity all the time to get clan gear, but it just means that we have to be very, very careful with our playthrough, because if we lose clan stuff, it's going to be really tough to get it back. So, let's have a look at these mechs real quick. So if you look at the bottom here, uh, unlockable abilities, Brute, 20, and Fisticuffs at 40. 
Uh, for the Kit Fox, we've got Scrapper, which is Ace Pilot and Multi Tracker at level 20, which is what our pilot is currently. Hull Down at 40, Resilience at 40, uh, Superior Stabilization at 150, Tuned Engine at 150. Like, I mean, like it, I don't know if we'll go that many missions with this guy, but certainly like maybe to 40, you know? So you do get, depending on the mech, you do get like other bonuses depending on how good the pilot is, right? So brawler, short and medium range accuracy, plus four minimum range accuracy. Like that's that's great for the mislinks, right? Um, I see you, sensor probe de uh, detection, sensor range, you know, and then so on and so forth. Mongoose, same same idea. You don't get much, but uh, plus one to all pilot skills at 40. That's actually pretty darn good. Plus one probe, vision and sensors, 15%. Cougar, not too bad. Minus 10% weapon heat generated at uh, 20, which is not too bad. Uh, resilience, 50% crit resistance later on, which is actually awesome. Um, they took the crit resistance out of the, tac the uh, tactical tree line. I used to always take that because of the 50% crit resistance bonus. That's huge, like it's huge, right? Um, so, but they, and they put it in here, which is I think really a great idea. It's like a fantastic idea. So and then our pilots, if we go to command center. Oh, sorry. We go to barracks if we know what we're doing. Uh, so in the barracks, we, we go to our pilots, right? We just hover over them. So Blade has got Scrapper. He's 20 right now um, with the Kit Fox. So, and if we've got people who pilot different mechs, uh, Hotware hasn't, but Giant has. So you can see there he's had five missions in the Mongoose, 13 missions in the Mislinx, and three miss missions in the Wasp Lamb. So, you know, what I had mentioned like earlier about the pilots, if they keep piloting the same mech, should get better with that mech and get bonuses. It's exactly what's happening, right? Um, so he's already ex-military, so he's already getting a bonus health, minus one recoil and all that stuff. But still, like, this is like, you know, it's fantastic. Like, it's great, right? It's really great how how, they, how they've done this. I really like, I really, really like it. You know, uh, Marlin has got bonus in the Hunter. Uh, Rose has got bonus in the Hunter in the Cloudbuster. Um, and Slingshot down here has got uh, the Mongoose bonuses. It's at 16 right now. You know, we kind of uh, sullied it with the Miss Lynx and the Wasp early on, but, you know, we're um, slowly progressing in the Mongoose. So that's my goal is to try and keep them in the same mechs. I really I really like that kind of idea where you're just not kind of mixing matching pilots to certain mechs. They kind of, they, they live in their mech. They own their mech. The more, the more you drive the same car, the more... Um, experienced you are with the handling you know if you go into a slide you know what the car is going to do what it's not going to do whereas if you're getting into a new car and you're driving it it goes into a slide you're going to do what you know to do as a driver but you don't know how it's going to respond in that situation which is you know once again I think that's just the, they did a, a great job with that all right but I'm going to end this episode here guys I hope you enjoyed it if you did drop a like if you haven't subscribed please feel free to subscribe you can also drop any comments in the comment section down below until next time we'll see y'all later